Alrighty guys, welcome back to Tool Time where we do nothing but tool reviews, tool hauls, giveaways, how-to videos, exposing the good, the bad tools. Today we're going to go over the most used tools I do for wire work, electrical work, anything like that on semi-trucks, trailers, box trucks, stuff along those lines. So, right after this we're going to go ahead and dive into it. I'll see you guys in just a second. Alrighty guys, thanks for tuning back into Tool Time. So from now on, on Tuesdays, we're going to start doing this, a segment of where I go over certain tools that I use for certain jobs. Today we're going to do electrical. Next Tuesday, we'll do something else along the lines of what I use for maybe patching tires or changing tires or doing oil changes and stuff along those lines and roof patches and this and that. But today, I'm going to go ahead and cover the stuff that I use the most. This isn't everything. This is just the stuff that I use every week, the stuff that gets used consistently all the time. And the stuff that I have on every truck. All my trucks have what you see on this table. They have all of it. The yellow box over here. These here. I've, I bought all these boxes from Harbor Freight. You can buy these there. I think they're like 7 bucks or whatever. It's a perfect organizer. And I made a whole bunch of kits for all the trucks. I'll show you that in just a second. Let's go ahead and dive into the tools up here. And let's go ahead and see what we got. Alright. So first starting out. I have these cheap Harbor Freight. Crimpers, they're the ratcheting crimpers. I do not have a part model number or anything off of them. I'm guessing it was probably on the box at one time. But that's what it looks like. It's got your reds, your blues, and your yellows there. They work great. I haven't had no problem out of them. So it's kind of one of those things that are cheap, but they work. So I continue to use them. That's that. And then I have... The Carlisle wire strippers and crimper all in one, and they're the same exact thing as the snap on ones. Let's see if I can get that to where it'll focus for you guys. There, you can read that there that tells you what it strips up here, it'll tell you what it crimps. The lighting's not the best on there. Does the bare insulated 12 through 20? They're the Carlisle ones. There's no part number on here that I see, or model number, anything like that. But you'll be able to find these if you just go to Napa or whatever and search Carlisle wire, Carlisle wire strippers or crimpers. They'll pop right up for you. This here is a snap on. Everybody makes fun of it, says it looks like a little sewing tool. I use this for cutting wire looms or harnesses or whatever. They're perfect. Yes. You, you're going to break one. I go through them all the time. But the Snap-on guy hands me a new one. I have to replace it probably at least once a month, we'll say. And he's always got an extra one ready for me. Nice little sharp point. This down in here is where the cutter is. It's very sharp. The part number on that, SGTT4A. Right there's all your information. And then we have... Your Harbor Freight quick strippers, they work great, have no problems out of them. It's one of those things, again, that's cheap, but they work great. Everybody says I'm biased to snap one. No, I am not biased to snap one. I have plenty of tool brands. This right here is just something cheap from Harbor Freight. They work great, so I continue to use them. And, of course, the 12 volt test lights and the part number on that is EECT 400G you can see it there and then it just has your little display screen there and it does ground and hot once again this is the one that I have I cannot find my straight cord one for some reason but the straight if you're gonna buy one definitely get a straight cord not a coiled one in my opinion but you might like the coiled ones better 
then from that, I've been using this. If I have to do a ground on like a frame or anything like that, I can clean it up with this and everything. So this has been serving two purposes as buffing tires and to clean up frame spots or anything like that where I need to do a ground on the frame or anything like that. And this is your Milwaukee cordless die grinder. It's the two inch die grinder, right angle die grinder. The part number is 2485. There's all your information on that. And I just have scotch Bright pad on it with a 6.0 battery. I put all these batteries in my M12 so I can stand them upright in my boxes on my service truck. This here is a tr seven way. It's not the flat, it's the round pin one. And it has the hot and ground that go inside there. You hook this up to the batteries on the service truck, plug this into your trailer. To light all your lights up so you can make sure all the lights are working all that good stuff it's whatever you can call it a hack whatever these things are amazing they're a lifesaver and you don't have to spend eighteen hundred twenty five hundred dollars on a big roll around trailer light tester and air tester these are this costs maybe 20 bucks you can build one of these they work great you can't check your turn signals obviously and your stop lights but i have another one I don't know where it's at, I haven't used it in forever, but you plug it into the trailer and then it's got this on the other end, that I, but it's a flat that I plug into the back of the service truck and then you can test all your lights like that, turn signals and everything, yada yada. But this is the one that gets used the most. Like I said, it's a cheap thing to build. So going on over here, get this open, this has just all the butt connectors. A toggle switch, butt connectors, it has th those in there, this kind of pin ones, flats, has the pink ones, which are red, pink, whatever you want to call them, blue, yellow, then I've got the yellows of these, blues of these, these here are your bare copper for your bigger cables. And then the second drawer is just a bunch of heat shrink, an assortment of heat shrink going from green, then the black is the same as the green, this red is the same as this black, this blue and black is the same, yellow and black is the same, this black is your bigger, thicker stuff. And I have a bunch of smaller pieces here. It's just your basic assortment of heat shrink. And then down in here, I've got a bunch of these little things here that you can put on wires, little alligator clips, the insulated ones, smaller insulated ones. Oh, come on, get out of there. These are the, uh, whatever kind of clip you want to call them. Basically the ones that are on a test light. These are the non-insulated alligator clips. These are wire holding harnesses that you can, you know, put your wire together and bolt this down to whatever. We've got all different sizes of those in there from the biggest to the smallest. And then the last drawer here. This is our fuses and breaker box. You know, we carry the 30 amp and 20 amp of these kind of fuses because they go in the seven way boxes on the front of trailers. And then we just carry all of your big, your small, and your mini fuses in there. And then up here, I carry a selection of different colored tapes. So if you take an air valve apart that has, say, five, six, seven airlines running into it, you can mark them with tape, that way you don't forget which one goes where. Or if you run out of tape and you need more tape, I always carry just a bunch of different colors and a bunch of electrical tape with me. This up here is just overflow of butt connectors that I keep with me just in case. I have been <clears throat> big bends in the shop full of them. But I keep these on the truck just in case 
I get into a big wiring job and I need to do something or it needs to be done fast, I use butt connectors. I try to solder when I can solder, but not every, you're not going to get the solder on every job, especially on a semi trailer. And then there's another roll of red electrical tape. This is your Scotch 3M. Stuff's really, really sticking and good. And then I keep a roll of 7 to 6 millimeter 16 gauge wire. And then a roll of 14 gauge wire on the top of this. And I've also got a. I know I've got one in the shop somewhere. It used to be mounted on the wall. I don't know where it's at right now, but if you go to Harbor Freight, you can get a bend, it's like a rack, a wire spool rack, and I think, I believe there's nine rolls of wire on it, I've got those on the service trucks too, they're mounted to the doors with all different rolls of wire, you can change the rolls out when you need to, those are great. Well guys, that about sums it up for all of the electrical stuff that I use on a daily basis, like I said, I don't solder every day or every week. So I don't carry my soldering stuff in this. This all sits in one little spot in my box as my everyday or every week usage stuff. So my soldering stuff is not in there. And I didn't want to put it in this because I don't use it every day. But thanks for watching. Like, comment, share, subscribe. The Patreon is down below. The Patreon is going to be, for anybody that joins the Patreon, I'm going to do behind the scenes videos of that. Videos about starting a mobile mechanic business, a mobile heavy duty truck repair company, a mobile tire shop, or a tire shop and then a mobile tire company. Stuff like the paperwork behind scenes, billing, dealing with customers. We're going to do private giveaways for anybody that joins the Patreon. Just little stuff like that. You don't have to do it if you don't want to. Nobody's forcing you to do anything as always. But thank you for watching. As always, get out and fix something. Get to work. I've got to get out of here. I've got to get back to work. I did this little quick video, but I've got to head out. Thanks for watching. I'm out of here.